right after Jesus says, I will give you rest to those who labor and are heavy laden, we have an argument here about rest, which is essentially what the Sabbath is about. It's about rest. True rest is found only in Christ. And the Sabbath actually points us to that. Biblical rest is about obedience to God. Hi and welcome to this week's study as we go through the teachings of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel. And today we are covering one topic or one area in Jesus' teaching that I think many modern Christians don't pay enough attention to and that some denominations, I think, pay too much attention to. But it is one area where I think we actually need to have a proper understanding of. And I'm talking about none other than the Sabbath. And it's safe to say it's one of those areas where there's plenty of potential misunderstandings, uh, potential overemphasis, potential underemphasis by different parties. And I will say right away that I, I do not pretend to know everything about the Sabbath. And I do have my own understanding, I do have my own uh, perception of this from my readings and my studies. But it's good that we all pay more attention to this area than we usually have. And I just want to point us to some other resources that could really help. And I highly recommend listening to the Bible Project's podcast on this topic. They call it the Seventh Day Rest Series. And they actually discuss it in detail. And they go through it as a biblical theology. All right? And just to explain what biblical theology is. When we study theology, there's, there's usually two broad categories. One is systematic theology and the other being biblical theology. Now, that does not mean that systematic theology is therefore not biblical. Yeah, it doesn't mean that at all. But systematic theology is just where we, as the name suggests, systematically categorize aspects of God or about God or what God has done topically. So it's according to topics. For example, we have pneumatology and this is the study of the Holy Spirit. And systematic theology, what it would do is that it will look at the Bible as a whole and draw every single data and every single information possible and conclude what the Holy Spirit is about from that study. Okay? And this is what we call a synchronic view, which means viewing everything at the same time. And you know the word synchronize, that's from the same word. Biblical theology, on the other hand, uh, is what we call a diachronic view. It means true time. So it's not taking everything at one go, but looking at how things uh, actually change through time. So taking pneumatology again, what biblical theology will do is see how authors of the Bible write about it through the Bible. Okay? flowing with time and see how the understanding changes with time, changes with the history as God reveals more and more about, let's say, the Holy Spirit, pneumatology throughout Israel and the church journey with God. And the Sabbath is one of those areas that we really benefit once we see how the understanding of the Sabbath actually gradually changes and evolves as God sheds more light and reveals more as time goes on. Especially when Jesus thought about it and how the church, how Paul and how the apostles actually understood it. So I highly recommend the, the podcast series by The Bible Project. It's a long series. There's about 14 episodes, uh, each about one hour. So there's 14 hours there and they start from Genesis chapter 1, from creation to the flood story, to the Ten Commandment, to the Jubilee, to Jesus, and then to the book of Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews. Okay, Now, we'll cover some of that today, but not all. But mainly, we want to see what Jesus thought about it. So, And it's found in Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. So let me read that first. Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 to 14. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? And those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the, of the presence, the showbread, which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. 
and if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. He went on from there and entered their synagogue. And a man was there with a withered hand. And they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So that they might accuse him. He said to them, Which one of you who has a ship, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out, and it was restored, healthy like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Now we see right away that this is part of what is called the Sabbath controversy where there were disputes between the religious leaders and, and Jesus uh, and the scribes, right? Uh, what, about what the Sabbath is about. How is, it, how is it supposed to be observed and why they observe it? And something that we don't immediately realize just from reading the passage is that this very notion of how to observe the Sabbath, uh, why they observe it, has actually changed and evolved as the years pass, as I mentioned just now, especially during the time of Jesus, or what we will call the Second Temple period. This is called the Second Temple period after they have experienced the exile and the subsequent return from exile. And this change, right, throughout the century uh, was not for the better according to Jesus here, okay? Because what the Pharisees and the religious leaders have done, uh, out of wanting to obey God, actually, their concern was actually to, to obey God and they want to do the Sabbath right, uh, to know what can and cannot be done during the Sabbath. And what they did was they actually set very rigid laws. They said, okay, these are the rules and regulations during Sabbath. You can do this, you can do that, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. And what that ended up happening is putting a heavy burden onto the people making them heavy laden and that is why Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes were having this argument in our passage today and this is especially interesting right and very eye-opening if you read the passage in literary context okay many of us because this is the beginning of chapter 12 right will not even consider to look back a bit at what happened or what was written just before this right at the end of chapter 11 and I want to highlight why this is so important. So let me just read it to you now and show you why it's extremely important to, to read in literary context. So let me read to you from Matthew 11 uh, verses 25 to 30, the last couple of verses. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Now this is the key, verse 28. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, it's quite deliberate, I think, that Matthew have arranged it this way, his account this way. Right after Jesus says, I will give you rest to those who labor and are heavy laden, we have an argument here about rest, which is essentially what the Sabbath is about. It's about rest, right? So, what we have in our passage of study today is essentially an illustration of how Jesus gives rest how Jesus demonstrates that his yoke is light. What does it mean to, uh, to Jesus to give rest to those who labor, to those who are heavy laden? And these are some examples of it, but they are not the only examples, not the only way, but Matthew arranged it this way to highlight and give some examples of how Jesus actually gives people rest, gives those who are heavy laden rest. And the point here being, the way that the Pharisees and scribes have set the rules and regulations and laws on how to practice the Sabbath is actually adding burden, adding labor to the people of Israel at that time rather than giving them rest, rather than fulfilling the purpose of the Sabbath. And Jesus calls them out. Jesus rebukes them. He tempts them. In, also in Matthew 23, you know, basically the whole chapter right, of Matthew 23 is, is condemning the Pharisees and scribes. But let me read to you just the first four verses, Matthew 23, verse 1 to 4. Then Jesus said to the crowd and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. 
So do and observe what they tell you, yeah? but not the works they do. Yeah? Now, this is something very odd, but I won't cover it now. We'll cover it later. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burden, okay? same thing, heavy burden, hard to bear and lay them on people's shoulders. Now remember what the yoke is. Yoke is something where you carry it together. Uh, so Jesus saying that his yoke is light, but the Pharisees put something heavy on the people's shoulders. Okay, continue on, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their fingers. So they are making the burden of the people heavy. And that is what Jesus is here to lift up because his yoke is light. And notice that the problem was not with, was not with the Mosaic law. That was never the issue. Okay? The issue was with how the religious leaders have made the Sabbath law say more than it actually does. And notice Jesus never condemns the Sabbath law, but about how it is actually practiced. Which brings us to this question, what is the Sabbath? What is rest? What is biblical rest all about? And before we really dive into what Jesus is teaching here in Matthew chapter 12, we should look at what and why, what and why the Sabbath is commanded by God. And it's actually a very important thing to God because God is the one who blessed the seventh day and made it holy if you read Genesis chapter 2 verse 3. And when God was judging Israel, one of the reasons why Israel uh, was judged was because they have not kept or observe the Sabbath according to Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 13 verse 16 verse 21 verse 24 also in Amos chapter 8 verse 5 and God describes the Sabbath as His Sabbath God said you did not observe my Sabbath okay you can also find that in Exodus chapter 31 verse 13 Le Leviticus 19 verse 3 and also Isaiah 56 verse 4 so the Sabbath is clearly something that's very important to God Hence, we must seek to understand why is the Sabbath so important okay? and, why, and what does it mean to God? Why does God want Israel and His people to observe it? And that includes actually us, but not in the way uh, that the Pharisees did it. And we can first look at this from the Ten Commandments. Okay? The foundation of the covenant stipulation between Israel and God. And interestingly, the Ten Commandments were actually mentioned or given or spoken to Israel Twice, okay, two times. Once in the book of Exodus, where God has just redeemed uh, them from Egypt, and the second time is in the book of Deuteronomy. And this, this is where the second generation of Israelites, the first have died in the wilderness because of uh, they don't trust God uh, when they send spies into the land and God judged them, right? And this is where they are about to be brought over the river Jordan to go into the promised land. And here they were reminded of the Ten Commandments again, reminded of their covenant with God. And interestingly, if you read the, the two accounts of the Ten Commandments side by side, right, uh, they are mostly identical, word for word identical, except for the law on the Sabbath. Okay? Except for the law on the Sabbath, they are a bit different. And the law of the Sabbath is found in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11, and also in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 5, verses 12 to 15. And in Exodus, the reason for keeping the Sabbath is found in chapter 20, verse 11. Let me read it to you. For in six days, the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. This was the first reason, okay? Whereas in Deuteronomy 5, it is found in verse 15. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out of there, out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. So we see that actually when God gave the Ten Commandments and it comes to the Sabbath, the first reason for the Sabbath was because of creation. God wanted them to cease from what they are doing, cease from what we are doing, and just take in, to just absorb the grandeur of what God has done and seeing His glory in creation. God made uh, the Sabbath day holy. It's a reminder of what shalom rest is like, what shalom was like when the, the thing were, when creation was completed, when it was perfect. And, and God was saying that it is very good. So the first reason was creation. The second reason for the Sabbath is because of redemption. Okay? You must rest. You must appreciate rest. You must appreciate Sabbath rest because you have experienced hardship in Egypt. 
because you were slaves. You labored and you toiled in, in oppression. People oppress you, but God has redeemed you, has saved you. Therefore, you must keep the Sabbath. So the Sabbath rest was focused and founded on these two key ideas, on creation and also on redemption. And therefore, how it is to be observed is related and founded on these two reasons and ideas. And we have to realize that first, it is God who instituted the Sabbath. Okay? It's not some, something that man made up. Uh, so uh, we, we should pay attention to it. And second, the Sabbath calls, the Sabbath calls for remembering the creation order when everything was good, where there was shalom. And then third, where those who are oppressed and are heavy laden were released and redeemed by God. And with this in mind, let us take a look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12. Okay? And apologies that I took a long time to explain that because I think it is important that we know this and we understand why before we see what Jesus says. Then we can understand what he teaches here. And one of the key to understanding the Sabbath controversy in Matthew chapter 12 is to look at verses 6 to 8. And Jesus says something uh, here. He says that something greater then the temple is here. That mercy is more desirable than sacrifice and that this is the crucial one. Okay, This is the crucial one. The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. And again, I remind you, Jesus had just said that those who are heavy laden and burdened should come to Him and He will give them rest. And now we have two incidents that sparked the Pharisees okay? that, that actually made them want to argue. First, the disciples were picking grains in the fields and they're eating them. And second, he healed the man with a withered hand. So for the Pharisees, these were violations of Sabbath. Okay? They considered this to be work. But for Jesus, they were not violations of the Sabbath. Why? And we have to remember the two reasons for the Sabbath, creation and redemption. It's about restoring shalom, restoring creation. It's about lifting the burdens of those who are heavy laden, those who need redemption. So actually healing the man with a withered hand is restoring creation. It's putting back uh, things to how it should be, right? R healing the pe person's hand is restoring to how the creation order is like, where things were good, were was perfect. There was shalom rest. And second, plucking the grains from the field for when they are hungry was probably seen like an act of redeeming them from their slavery, from their toil, where hunger was very common. And here they were allowed to pluck it and to satisfy their hunger because it is like uh, redeeming them from slavery, from hunger. But the Pharisees could not take it. Hmm? For them, it was rigid. It is their way or the highway. They set the rules. Hmm? But they forgot who actually commanded the Sabbath. It was the Son of Man. It was God who is the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. And He is that which is something greater than the temple. He is that which is greater than the temple because He will be the one who will bring about ultimate redemption and ultimate rest to all humanity and to restore. Jesus is the one who will restore God's creation. He is that which is greater. But that's not all. Okay? Jesus gives three other examples or rebuttals that demonstrate why the Pharisees were wrong in what they were complaining. Okay? Let me just go through this very quickly. The first of the three is this. It's actually a matter of authority. And this is demonstrated by David and Jesus. Jesus being the Lord of Sab Sabbath and David being the king. Okay? And David is a respected king whom the Israelites at that point looked back upon fondly because uh, the time when David ruled was considered to be the golden era. And the story that Jesus was referring to is actually found in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 21, verses 1-6. to And at that time, David was not king yet, but he was still under Saul. And the point that Jesus was making here is basically this. There, David and his men was hungry. And here, Jesus and his disciples were hungry. That's why the disciples plucked. But here David was also hungry. And David, whom you all, uh, you, you Pharisees, you all respected, right? Uh, you all respected and find no wrong in David. Uh, and through his authority, through David's authority, actually overrided, 
a legal prescription of God that the, the bread of the presence or the bread of the show bread can only be eaten by the priest. But here it was taken by David and his men. Now, Jesus being the Lord of the Sabbath is even greater than David. Who is to say that what Jesus had permitted the disciples to do were wrong? It wasn't. When the Son of Man, when the King, when the greater authority permits someone to do something, then no one can blame him. No one can say that what the person, what the people who were commanded to do was wrong. It is a matter of authority who gave the command. All right? Now, second, it's a matter of priority. Okay, we see what uh, the priests were doing in the temple. And here Jesus uses the examples of the priests. Okay? And how for the priests, even though it was a Sabbath, okay, they were not prohibited from carrying out their duties, whether it is to keep the menorah or the lights burning, they have to make sure that the lights never, never go out, whether it is offering sacrifices, whether it is changing the bread of the presence, the, the, the show bread. And all these are work. All these are work actually. And what the priests do, but they were allowed to do so even on the Sabbath. Why? This was Jesus' argument. If you are so rigid with the Sabbath, right, why allow the priests to work even on the Sabbath? And the reason why the priests were allowed to work is because of priority. What comes first? What is more important? So for the priests, what is more important is to keep the holiness, the cleanliness, and to keep the worship of the Holy of Holies, of the sanctuary ongoing, rather than to observe the Sabbath uh, and just rest and do nothing. For them, the priority is to see their responsibilities to God in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, be fulfilled. Okay? One was deemed more important than the other. The priority of the continual function uh, of the temple is greater and therefore overrides the Sabbath for the priest. So, why should not the well-being of the disciples, okay, of anyone really, override the Sabbath? That's what Jesus is arguing. Okay? There are something that are, is, is a priority over than just a rigid following of the Sabbath and the disciples being hungry, the man's hand uh, being withered. This takes priority rather than the rigid rules. Okay? And therefore, we, 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 should, uh, we should not let the Sabbath prevent those who are hungry to hunt to harvest a bit, to pick, so that they can eat and be filled. We should not let the Sabbath prevent those who are sick, who are weary to go seek help and be healed. It's a matter of priority. Okay? And third, finally, it's a matter of common sense. And here Jesus used the example of a sheep in a pit. Okay? And Jesus told this as he was healing the man with a withered hand. Okay? And to me, this is just common sense. Okay? Jesus uses the example of the sheep uh, falling into the pit on the Sabbath and common sense dictates that one should go and save the animal because you should. right? This is your animal. Uh, it's, it's, it's a prized possession and therefore you should save that. And let's say we just change the example. Uh, we change the example. What if our children were to fall into the pit? Okay? Will we not go and save them on the Sabbath? Of course we would. It's common sense. It's also preservation of life. And Jesus is saying to the Pharisees and the scribes, hey, you guys, uh, you lack common sense. You guys have made what I, what God had commanded about the Sabbath into something that's too severe and senseless. And Jesus just proceeds and then heals the man with a withered hand. So, Having explained all of that, those three points, what does that mean to us? In one sentence, okay? True rest is only found in Jesus. Okay? True rest is only found in Jesus. Because only Jesus, only God can and will restore creation to how God intended it to be. And only Jesus can redeem us. Only Jesus can redeem us from our sins, from our toils, from our suffering, from our heavy burdens, from our fruitless labor. True rest is found only in Christ. And the Sabbath actually points us to that. Biblical rest is about obedience to God, keeping His Sabbath, reminding ourselves of the promises of God, uh, which is to restore creation and to redeem us. And the idea is to set people free. The idea is for them to enjoy God's creation and goodness. And it is not to shackle man into man-made laws. 
It is not to add burden onto people's lives. And we need to know the authority behind what we do, behind the Sabbath. We need to know the priority behind what we do. And we need to have wisdom and even common sense in what we do. And the authority over Sabbath is Christ. The priority over Sabbath over the Sabbath is us ministering to God and to others as priests. And the common sense in the Sabbath is that it is good of it is for the good of man and even the animals. It is for creation and not to add burden. And that is what we need to learn from the teaching of Jesus here on the Sabbath. And I want to end today not with a prayer, but I want us to read a passage from Hebrews chapter 4. I will read quite a number of verses from verses 1 to 16. Let this be the conclusion because this talks about rest and I want us to pay attention to what the writer to the Hebrews actually say. So let's read Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 16. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest. Just as he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundations of the world, creation, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way and God rested on the seventh day from all his work and again in this passage he said they shall not enter my rest since therefore it remains for some to enter it and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience again he appoints a certain day today saying through David so long afterwards in the word already quoted today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts for if Joshua had given them rest God would not have spoken of another day later on so then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God for whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is, a, is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Church, let us be found obedient so that we can enter the rest of God. Let us therefore strive to enter this rest and let us rest in Christ because He is our great High Priest and we are able to draw near to the throne of grace receiving mercy. It's all because of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for listening.